Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and welcome back to another episode of our large landscape painting. Now this is actually probably going to be the last episode on this painting because we're almost done. We need to add a little bit of extra light and a lot of detail, so that's what we're going to do today. And of course, if you've enjoyed this entire series, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. All right, let's get started. One of the first things that needs to happen up here is, well, we need to sort of add some detail to this trunk. So I have this color here, which is a nice trunk color, and I have some clear gel mixed right in with it. Now, because obviously this is dry, everything is dry, I can just take this and kind of streak it right over this bark that we've already painted and get smaller effects. I actually did this uh, on the other tree a couple weeks ago, just, I was just messing around and did it and kind of didn't really think about it. And then I, you know, started looking at it. I like the way it looked, so I'm gonna do it to, to this tree as well. I'm gonna actually do this with multiple colors too. It's just streaking it down. There, pretty simple. This isn't, this isn't gonna take too long. Next, I'll take just a little bit of a soft rust color, which is mostly red and brown, and I wanna throw that almost like a surprise color behind one of these trees. I think that'll really look good, actually. There, now see, I don't really care too much about this area as far as getting it perfect. I just wanna throw the color in. You know, I can mess around with it if I need to later. It just, let's, especially in a painting this big, let's just throw some color in. And then let's figure out which parts need to be adjusted and made, you know, kind of look more like a bush and which parts are okay by themselves. There. Some darks and some lights. Remember, we're painting on a dry canvas, so this is very difficult to do. No, it's not difficult. You gotta think about it. <laughs> you gotta, it's not gonna happen automatically for you, so. You gotta think about these different variation of colors that you want in here, otherwise you won't have any variation at all. There. Now I'll load up my brush with a very, very vibrant green. And actually before I get to the liner brush work, which is what I was about to do, I just looked over at this tree and said, ah, oh, it needs that extra, extra light. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna at least try to build this area up a little bit brighter back here so that we get some more interest in this area. It goes a little flat back here. This will help. This will help to kind of pop it out there. I'm using the detail round. You could use a filbert just as well, probably for this. I just want that clean light out on there. So whatever brush you use, just make sure we get some clean light. Very, very bright, vibrant. No darks in this at all. Just a little white, green, yellow, and call it good. You don't want to darken this. And this is kind of interesting because it's dry down here. We shouldn't have any, we won't have any mixing issues, but you know, if you get something that's too, too thick or blobby, you're gonna have to go in and touch it up. And I wanna bring these in. I, I noticed another thing I wasn't doing was bringing these limbs in. So I do need to take just a couple and bring them inward toward the tree, not just the, because see some stick out forward toward you and those catch light as well. You can't just go with like light on the left unless it's a very strong, almost backlit, you know, which we kind of have, sort of, but at least for right here, I'm gonna stick to this way. A couple of the trees over there have less light. And we can get away with less branches, you know, sticking forward, getting caught by the light. There, okay, now that I have that done, I'm gonna throw a little blue into the mix. A little blue, a little green, there. And let's work on just a couple of brighter mid-tones. Now I'll quickly load just a little bit of thin green on our little liner brush. And I'm gonna just stand right here, or <laughs> sit right here, and just paint in a lot of grass. Now, the, the couple of things you'll notice that are different. Number one, obviously, as has been, you know, for ever since, really since we started, our background is dry and the paint just simply acts differently. That's been my, my number one. It's not an issue, but the number one thing, you know, about this whole painting is it's been different as we've been trying to paint it. There, so anyways, the point is, you're not gonna have any mixing up here, which is gonna cause a little bit of hard edges. So we may need to come along the bottom, bottom and soften some of this. I'm just gonna paint in zillions of these little things. We've got all the time we, we, we need to take, so I'm not gonna rush through this. 
<laughs> five weeks of painting. I'm not going to rush the ending. So I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to paint, paint in these little blades of grass very carefully. Make sure I got them where I want them. Make sure that the lighting is good on them too. There. So I'm just very repetitive. Every once in a while though, I may, I may choose to add in a, you know, a little plant just by touching and giving myself some leaves and things down here. There. Now, of course, this liner brush is so good at making, making long lines. So you can actually come way down here and I mean, pull up tremendously long ones. That is totally something that you should be doing as well. If they look a little scratchy, maybe it doesn't matter. Maybe it doesn't matter because I'll throw some blue into that there <laughs> because you know, it helps to break them up so they don't seem so solid. Wow. That's so pretty. All right. I'm just going to do this over and over and over and over again, and then I'll come back. Now I wanted to go ahead and take just a quick break from the grasses. I'll get back and paint some more in later, but I wanted to, to just drop in some limbs as well, because I was looking up at the street and I just thought oh, I wanted to see what it looks like finished up. It looks like it was really close. Just needs some limbs. So the limbs are really easy. These you can just drop on with no problem. And here's the, the bonus. If you get one you don't like, you can just wipe it off. There, as long as it's, you know, not, not going over a wet area. And there are no wet areas up at the top of this tree. The trunk is wet, but that's not where we're painting, so it's all good. And I'm really just going to go very slowly, shape these limbs the way that I want them to be. They don't have to be perfect, but there, I want them to at least have a, a decent flow to them. And some of them are very, very rough. I'm going to go ahead and address those right now as well. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to take the rough ones and just try to taper them off a little better. I did these very quickly and very impressionistic on purpose, knowing that I was going to have an opportunity now to come back, sort of clean them up, which is cool. Good stuff. Why would you work so hard when you know you can just come back and very easily tweak it there? And I didn't want to use the liner brush till the very end. So there you go. Now I'm going to go ahead and just drop on a bit of highlight back here to this yeah, this little waterfall. This one's not as important as any of the others, so I'm not going to spend much time on it because I didn't really want to draw a lot of attention to this side. Maybe a little, little touch right here. Good. And then I'm just going to blend these all together and maybe just create a feeling of a little bit of movement on the water, but not much. Definitely don't want a whole lot of movement there. Now, one of the last things we're going to do to this painting is just dry brush over a little bit of black, really a dark gray, it's not pure black, over some of the shadow areas in this mountain, and even over the highlight. What this is going to do is make a, a very, very fine broken texture. And it, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm touching so light that it's only clipping, you know, the top peaks of the paint. And then the area where the paint doesn't raise up, those areas are, well, they're not hit with this color. So it leaves a lot of a lot of beautiful detail really very easily. I'm just going to do that over these mountains. All right, well, I think we finally have a completed painting here. It's really been a lot of fun working on it each week, and I want to thank you for your support. You seem to really enjoy it, so that's what makes it even more fun for me. Now, we do have a couple more of these canvases, so you never know. Maybe down the road, we'll do another big one. Of course, don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brushline. Also, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.